This week, the Reserve Bank held interest rates at 3.5 percent. This amid evolving online consumer spending patterns and gloomy outlook of fort, uh, fortel sector, well, for the retail sector rather. Meanwhile, credit ratings firm Moody's has flagged a worrying trend among banks in South Africa. Too much exposure to a mining industry caught in the middle of climate change. Now, this includes oil, gas and transport sectors, which are also facing constant environmental change. Well, joining us to explain the rating firm's report is economist Richard Downing. Good afternoon to you and thank you so much for joining us. Pleasure. Well, talk to us first about the results coming out of this latest retail trade survey. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, the problem is that the consumers are under pressure because the economy is under pressure. Uh, you know, unemployment is very high. And I think it all culminates eventually in... Uh, you know, spending in terms of retail sales. And uh, what we're actually seeing there is a 7% 7, 7 in volume terms down on last year at the same time. And that is only a reflection, you know, on, uh, on what, what uh, the, 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 the COVID lockdown process actually did to the economy. Uh, the, the lockdown as such uh, had much severe consequences than the health consequences of the COVID-19. So it's a, it's a difficult situation to, to actually manage, and it is actually a difficult choice between risks and risks. The risk in terms of, of health and the risk in terms of the economy and jobs and that type of thing. And this is a world phenomenon. I mean, the U.S., Britain, Europe, all over places have actually struggled to find a balance between this. And perhaps the, the first uh, stab at uh, trying to lock down economies was perhaps more disastrous than actually thought. And uh, it actually prevented uh, real activity in the economies. Mm. And that actually is uh, flowing through into your, your revenue of the fiscus and all that and makes it very difficult actually to get the economy going again. Now, we are sort of heading towards a third wave of this COVID-19 pandemic. And you've mentioned how the pandemic has so far affected the economy. How will this third wave likely affect business confidence? And how should businesses actually adjust themselves to be able to survive that? Well, I mean, business is not affected by, by health issues as such. It's, it is a, a secondary effect that actually is, is the problem area. And it all depends upon, upon how you actually manage the lockdown. Uh, there's a lot of, I, I'm not a medical guy that can actually evaluate what is actually happening in terms of COVID, but it seems like, you know, it, 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 uh, you could, it's, it's much easier to, uh, to, to attack the, the new uh, variant uh, than before. But now again, your, your, your recovery rate might, might be higher. So it's difficult for me actually to find find the exact answer to this, uh, listening to all the medical advice mm -hmm. that comes through. But one thing I know is that lockdowns in the, where you actually prevent economic, uh, physical economic activity taking place. Uh, in, the, in the end, uh, I mean, it'll, it'll, it'll affect, it'll come back at government, it'll come back at, uh, at the consumer, it, it'll come back to investment. And that is the big worry. I mean, you talk about confidence, it's not only about business confidence, but I think what is more important is uh, investor confidence. Investor confidence in terms of putting your money into physical assets that can help the economy to produce. Um, and that is the main issue that we're facing at the moment. Mm -hmm. In terms of we saw that uh, as real fixed investment that is now creating physical assets in terms of uh, transport, machines, or whatever the case may be, that that actually was down by 17% in volume terms, which is a huge decline in terms of your investment levels. And if you don't have a proper invest, uh, capital stock, it is very difficult to, get, to start the economy all over again. Therefore, it's very important how, actually how, how you manage your lockdown processes and try to stay away from unnecessary sort of issues that um, might not bear the, the health consequences that one would like to have. So I think one must always stick to the, to the basics in terms of, you know, wearing a mask, uh, sanitizing, and, 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 and adhering to sort of basic uh, health principles. Uh, that could help. And I, I mean, one, one could see, I mean, in, in terms of, so sometimes it's difficult for people to, 
to, to for instance, have social distancing. But that is the issues actually at stake. And I mean, the, and, 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 and therefore it's important actually how the whole process is managed, not only in terms of the health issues. And we know the vaccinations is not running at the, at the speed that we would like to see it because that will have economic consequences as well. As, as well. So it's important to sort of link all these processes up together and, it's a, 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 and follow a comprehensive process and that actually address the variants or whatever the case may be, but also keep the economy going and uh, to see that, that there's not a lot of uh, sort of dis disruptions in the economy mm -hmm. because of the, of, of, of the lockdown process as such. Now, Mr. Downing, there's also the issue of um, the interest rate that was kept at 3.5%. When the announcement came out, was that something that you would have predicted and you think it's a good idea? Well, I mean, you, uh, there is pressure on, 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 on inflation. We must just remember inflation is an economic phenomenon and it's a process. It is not the once off happening. And the process that the Reserve Bank is actually referring to is that there's sort of, there's, uh, in the background, there's, the background music to inflation is telling us that inflation might be heading upwards. And that is the general price level. It's not my and your sort of shopping basket that we're looking at. We're looking at the economy and to consumers, the CPI usually is used as a, a measure of inflation in, in the end and, 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 and it uses a general price level for that purposes. And that's what the Reserve Bank is looking at. And it's trying to keep inflation between that six and 3%. And we know it went down below 3% recently. But that the Reserve Bank must be looking forward in terms of where inflation might be going and the pressure that is building up. And I think that is why they couldn't actually lower interest rates further. And there's also the, the, prob the probability that interest might, rates might increase actually in future. And, we know, and that's not the only interest rate, the short term ones, in terms of where the consumer can borrow. It's also in terms of where government can borrow, and we know in terms of the credit rating agencies, mm -hmm. it's difficult for South Africa to borrow at low rates, and rates close to 10% at the moment is the going rate in terms of borrowing uh, for government and for other, for other uh, purposes. And that is actually the bigger problem. So your yield curve in terms of interest rates is actually is a bit technical, but that is the issue actually at stake at the moment. Well, just speaking about uh, those uh, credit ratings agencies, Moody's recently just uh, issued an alarm or sounded an alarm rather to the South African banks. Just tell us a bit more about that and what the banks should be doing to better position themselves. Well, I think uh, it's not only the banks. I mean, we had an economy that was running, that had some difficulties already in, 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 at the beginning of 2020, 2020 as such with recessionary conditions prevailing then. And then suddenly came this old, this pandemic and the way uh, some governments actually tried, you know, to manage it as, a, as, a, as, a, as an enemy type of thing and go to war against the virus as such. But I mean, it was more about managing the health uh, uh, situation in terms of this pandemic. And, 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 and the problem is that the rating agencies and the banks, they had, they had a lot of exposure towards the government, which was... And the credit rating which went down and then of course in terms of your consumers because of the lockdown they also were, went into some difficulties in repaying so impairments with banks actually went up and that actually put uh, the banks also under pressure because if your biggest client the government which borrows from you and and they are already in a in, in a in a sort of situation where the credit rating is going down then of course it will be a, it will affect your sort of claims against, the, against them as well, consumers as well as government, as well as SOEs especially. And I think that's where the banks, the banks have been, been running quite good and, and they had uh, the capitalization, meaning that they could actually service all this type of loans and things, well, well, became uh, came under pressure to some extent. And that is why banks is now also finding it difficult to some extent, not paying dividends and that type of thing. Mm -hmm. and like, uh, to, to manage the process. So it's a difficult situation for everybody, except perhaps for government officials that seems to actually still uh, are, are, are trying to get uh, uh, increases, salary increases in terms of where the fiscus is under a severe pressure in terms of meeting all its obligations.
And just in terms of exposure of banks, I mean, South African banks uh, have actually have ex extensive lending in the mining industry. And if you look further afield in the, in the continent at large, Uganda is actually overexposed when it comes to farming and fishing. How can the banks then sort of limit that exposure just to safe keep themselves? Well, we must accept, you know, that credit, uh, providing credit to the economy and oiling the machine all the time is a, is a normal situation. But for anybody to handle, suddenly handle a, a quite a difficult situation like we had with the pandemic and the way it was perhaps managed and the lockdown processes were managed all over the world, I mean, it created very severe difficulties for some financial institutions, not because of their mis mismanagement or whatever or to who they were lending, because that is normal practice. But the problem is if your clients come under pressure, then it feeds back into your system. And that is what is actually experienced at the moment. Even the United States, with a $1.9 trillion sort of uh, package to get the economy going, is finding it difficult. And, 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 and a big economy like that even, and even the European economies, are still so, so from sort of battling the situation. And even China, which, which is, is, is experiencing higher growth rates than other economies, in the end is also dependent upon their clients in the West, in the Western economies, like the United States, like Europe. So it, nobody's excluded, actually, from what is happening. So it's nobody's a real fault as such. I mean, it's, it's an extraordinary situation that uh, people are trying to deal with, a consumer, small business, especially your tourism businesses. We know especially has been hard hit your airlines. So there's a lot of issues that we could mention where people are actually battling to get back to a sort of a normality. But it'll take time, and I, and I think one would, therefore one must be very, very careful how you actually manage your lockdown processes. And vaccination is one of the critical issues that we must attend to to try to limit the, the severe impact on, on business as such and the economy to get sort of people back to work again and businesses working again. And just lastly, I want you to address the issue of uh, the Suez Canal being blocked. And that's one of the worlds uh, through which a lot of cargo travels, you know, um, and losses of, of tens of billions of rands and of dollars uh, being counted daily. Um, what are the likely uh, ramifications or consequences of that giant carrier continuing to block that uh, channel? Well, what we're experiencing there is actually what the economy is all about. The economy is, in, in the end, about the real things, the real activity. And having a ship blocking the Suez Channel is exactly that. It's actually just like a lockdown process. It's a lockdown on the Suez Channel, which means that goods and service, especially goods, can't travel to destinations either from Europe to, to Asia or from Asia to Europe or whatever the case may be. And South Africa might benefit a little bit from this as, as uh, hopefully we could service some of those ships coming around the Cape now. But, uh, but still, it is, it is an extra cost to, to these, to, to these uh, sh shipping lines and so on. So it's a difficult situation, and that's exactly what lockdown actually processes do to economies. And therefore, a ship blocking the Suez Canal is a good sort of example of of how you can actually prevent actually physical, the physical economy, economy, as we call it, the real economy in economic terms, how we operate in terms of that. And I think that's what we're seeing there. And that will have an effect on international trade, which is nowadays a very important uh, sort of part of any economy on, in the world that is trying to have a progressive type of uh, approach towards growing its economy or whatever the case may be. Well, let's leave it there for this afternoon. Thank you so much for joining us and sharing those insights. So that was economist Richard Downing just unpacking the numbers that we saw unfolding this week in real terms and how they affect the citizen at home.